Uh, thank you, folks. Uh, great to be here. There is no uh, technical conference uh, without technical problems, so we have that checked. Uh, we don't have much time, so we are going to focus only on making the pipeline fast. There is more about uh, pipelines, CI pipelines to think about, but yeah, and I will have to fly through the slides. So maybe that's good. Maybe you see a pattern here, uh, fast presentation about making things fast. First of all, I'm Tomek. I'm a principal engineer at Forest. I came from Poland here. That was a long flight, but uh, yeah. So if we start a new project uh, today, we already have some hints how we should organize things. We have linting, we have testing, we have a GitHub pre-configured. Uh, you can also use Travis, I believe. Uh, and we have linting and testing. Uh, testing. That's, that's a great start. And there are some optimizations inside uh, already. I didn't know about uh, these commands, npmci. This is like kind of optimized um, install for CIs. And um, yeah, not sure if this is performance optimization, but you know, we have some hints in the uh, in this uh, configuration already. But let's switch to a big project, and this is actually a project of Forest, and uh, we'll de-optimize things. So I did the same on Circle CI, the same thing. And it took 42 minutes to build the whole project, you know, test it, all that stuff. Uh, that's pretty long, I would say. The same setup, uh, NPM CI, around 2,800 tests to run. And, uh, and I am already cheating here a bit because I use uh, a bigger container that we usually do. So uh, for that container that we use, large one, it doesn't even build. So that's, I guess that's not great. It's faster, but it fails, so. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we need more RAM, we need more CPUs. And if we are deployed to that, on the PR, we build uh, things in the parallel. On the main master, we build, uh, you know, we require test and linting to, to of course, to pass before we deploy. So this is, if you sum up the numbers, it's one, uh, one hour and 30 minutes, something like that, to deploy your stuff. If everything goes well and you didn't get any feedback on a PR. So yeah, that's a really hot, hot fix, I would say, if you are shipping. Uh, but I will, what I'm trying to convince you to is that we have great ecosystem for, uh, for testing. It's, it's great that uh, it was great to hear from Yehuda that uh, about testing in a browser. I always thought that we should test in a browser and it's not that common among uh, frameworks. Uh, and yeah, we have some tools. So Ember exam is going to help us. If we look at what was happening uh, with our container, we can see there was a spike on CPU, on RAM. Probably this is where the large container failed. Uh, but this machine is lazy. You, you, you can see it, it doesn't do a lot. So with just a simple command, with using Ember exam, we can split um, the load into three browsers. The way I imagine it is the number, the magic numbers, n minus one, n is uh, CPUs. So one leaf for the orchestration of, um, of browsers and three for, for these three browsers. So this is more effective. And look at that, we are 54% uh, faster just with that, with that simple trick, you know? Uh, <laughs> and we didn't, we didn't pay a penny for that. That, that, was, that was easy. And the load is still not optimal. If you run the same command uh, uh, locally and put dash dash server, you will see that the tests are uh, not balanced. Uh, different browsers have um, a different um, amount of tests to run. And this is happening mostly because of uh, splitting tests on, uh, on, based on files. Uh, files. <clears throat> so we can balance the load. Again, Ember exam, just a different command, is going to balance the load uh, the tests on, on a fly, in a fly. So now it's a little bit weird because it shows that there's one test to run, but actually there's one test in the queue. Let's say one, one is to test, but we serve them to, to different browsers. And that again, we didn't spend any money and we are 10% faster than the previous step. No, okay, that's, that's good. Uh, and we, now we will spend some money Unfortunately, we have to, but we'll use parallelizations, we'll use more containers, but we'll save money on the, uh, how big the container is. So now we are going to use the large one. Again, some code, easy. And now we have army of browsers running our code. In the browsers, uh, you know, that, that's great. That's, that's where they should, uh, it should happen. So six containers, three browsers, 18 um, browsers that run our tests. And now we are well under 10 minutes which is great, right? 
um, you can spend the rest of the time on TikTok or whatever, the, the, the time you just uh, saved for the company. And we are 62% faster than the previous step, right? And we really use these containers if we look in, in, inside. A lot of spikes to 100%. That's great because we pay for that, we, we use that. And uh, money so, solves a lot of problems, right? Uh, so you can say, you know, just use bigger containers, use them more, you will have even better results. And I agree, but that's not the point of this talk, is that's to use it uh, in a good way, I would say, effectively. So here we have 42 browsers to run the tests, and we are under six minutes, 50 seconds faster, 12% faster than previously, but we kind of pay twice the price. So you have to ask your CTO if that's possible. Uh, let's say it's not possible. So we spend, of course, uh, more money. We don't use all that power. Let's again save a little bit of money. We can look into the testing and we install dependencies with every, you know, every container. Uh, and we'll introduce, we are programmers, so we love abstraction. Uh, we'll introduce checkout code. It's going to install dependencies. We'll save that to the cache. We can even use smaller uh, container. And things are slower, but there is potential, you know? We are reusing some code. We love reusing stuff. So we are a little bit slower than the previous step, but still kind of doing okay, right? And we are just paying penalty kind of for restoring the cache, for saving the cache, for having extra step. But if installing dependencies is slow, can we make it faster? And I think we can. We just have to switch to PNPM. Uh, and I hope you already did that, but uh, if not, you will see why it, you should. So in our project, this is still, everything is on the real project, you know? Uh, so I had to run the test a million of times, uh, but just with another simple trick, uh, it's not that hard to use PNPM. We are 28% faster than the previous uh, step. And look at the checkout, you know, 53 seconds against three minutes. That's great, we didn't spend money. And not every road is going to give you results, and that's okay, because uh, I thought I will use even newer PNPM. I had to upgrade Node for that. Uh, there were some optimizations there, but it didn't, didn't matter after all. Uh, so we are better at building, and here, when running tests, something we don't see is that every container has uh, to build the test application. And maybe, if we're that smart, we can learn about uh, you know, building um, the app in the test environment, set it somewhere, save in the cache, and then you see that path dist, uh, we'll use that. <clears throat> and we are faster again. We are under six minutes, uh, folks. Uh, so we are 10% faster than the previous step. And of course, I'm, I prepared like, you know, the story here. So for us at the time, uh, it wasn't that linear. Uh, for us, it give, gave us 37% uh, bump, you know? So that was great. You should definitely uh, test, uh, test that approach. But I know I'm flying very fast through these slides, so maybe you didn't ask yourself, okay, you abstracted stuff, maybe you, maybe if, you know, every abstraction is costly in a way. Most of the times, that's, that's fine, you know? We don't have to write assembler code, uh, but, is abstracting mean, means being slower? Kind of it is. I just removed that, um, that code, uh, um, that checkout code uh, step, and I just copied uh, the stuff there. So, uh, so I installed dependencies again in every step. And now, yeah, it's 16% faster than the previous step. So we are 89% faster than at the beginning. This is, I think, quite impressive. And there is still room for improvements. If we again look at this chart, um, we can notice that when the tests, container are running tests, there is some idle time. We can see this is not balanced. Kind of why is this happening? Didn't we just on the, I don't know, fifth slide balanced the load? We did, but on a container level between browsers, but not between containers. So yeah, <clears throat> why is this happening? There is some potential, maybe 45 uh, seconds. So the potential is there, but what is happening? There is this proportion be, uh, between test files. You can have a test file that is testing your 404 page. How many tests you will fit there? Not many, right? And 
there can be a test that is, you know, testing the whole world actually. So other folks in the, um, in the community also had this issue. And uh, there was a, a Pat from Intercom, he, was, he had a presentation uh, and he touched on that thing as well. In Intercom, they introduced uh, a rule, max file length, uh, max file length uh, length rule, which makes, you know, guards that your test files will be kind of of the same size. So they will be balanced. And, and you know, watch that on, on YouTube, they had amazing results. Although I think this is probably not the way to do it. Like, uh, we need to start tracking um, files executions. Uh, so we, we track how fast the tests are in general, but we don't know how much we spent in the, uh, in the files. And there's a bunch of things in the play, and I really wanted to give you a solution, but I didn't make it before the conference. Uh, yeah, that was, that was difficult, but I will work on that. And if I have anything to update you on, subscribe to Ember Europe um, YouTube channel. The times won't be good for you to watch live, so if I manage to figure out this, I will, uh, you know, let you know in that uh, on that YouTube channel if they accept me. And that's it. We just improved by 89%. That's, by the way, faster. Uh, it was happening 42 minutes or something like that, and the presentation was 16 minutes. So, you know, we made it faster than the first uh, first build, and we have optimized that. Thank you very much.